All right, we're on one final, and I'm doing air quotes right now, final uh, video about trigonometric integrals. This is our last lecture uh, video for lecture 11, uh, but we will be using trigonometric integrals in the future. This is just the last lecture that focuses on trigonometric integrals. We've seen many examples of integrals involving sines and cosines, and we've seen many integrals involving tangents and secants. Tangents and secants are like BFFs, so it, we like taking integrals together. What about cotangent and cosecant? They're best friends as well. Um, and it turns out the integrals involving cotangent and cosecant are, the techniques are identical to how one does, uh, how one works with secant and tangent. There's just a few subtle differences, of course, like the derivative, the derivative of tangent, of course, we know is secant squared. The derivative of cotangent is a negative cosecant squared. So do remember there is a negative sign there that affects the u substitution. The derivative of cosecant uh, as well, you're gonna get a negative cosecant x uh, cotangent x. So there's a negative sign that pops up in the u substitution. So pay attention to that. The other parts that you're going to need to know that are slightly different is we need to know the antiderivative of cotangent and the antiderivative of cosecant. For the antiderivative of cotangent, it works very similar to the antiderivative of, of tangent. You replace cotangent with cosine x over sine x dx. And you try a u substitution. You'll take on the one on the bottom, which is sine, to be u. It's du is then cosine x dx. That's fortuitous. Uh, this then looks like the integral of du over u. And so you get the antiderivative, the natural log of the absolute value of u plus a constant. Replacing u instead with a sine, you get the natural log of the absolute value of sine of x plus a constant, which is exactly what we see right there. So it, it's very similar. It's, it, it's very similar to how one does uh, the antiderivative of tangent. The antiderivative of cosecant works out very similarly. Um, if your one is doing cosecant, oh, whoops, lost my mouse there. If you're doing cosecant, you have to multiply by this strategic number one here. Um, and the, what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply cosecant by cosecant x plus cotangent x, and this sits above cosecant x plus cotangent x. Multiply those, uh, multiply by that strategic number one, distribute the cosecant. Uh, what you then will see next is in the numerator, you'll go to cosecant squared x plus a cosecant x cotangent x. This sits above of still the cosecant x plus the cotangent x. There's a dx right here. And like we saw in the situation of secant, there's a nice u substitution we can utilize right now. We're going to take u to be the denominator, which is cosecant x plus cotangent x. Uh, and so then du is going to equal, well, taking the derivatives of these things, derivative of cosecant is negative uh, co cosecant cotangent x, which is this part right here minus the negative sign there. And then the derivative of cotangent is a negative cosecant squared x, which is this part here minus the negative sign, du, uh, dx, excuse me. So we just need the negative sign, so just do a double negative to compensate. So in terms of the u substitution, it works out really nice. You get a negative, the integral of du over u again, that becomes a negative, the natural log of the absolute value of u plus a constant in which case you could write this as the natural log of the absolute value. Remember, um, u here is cosecant plus cotangent. So you get cosecant x, don't forget the negative sign, negative natural log of absolute value of cosecant plus cotangent x plus a constant. And admittedly, you could leave it right here. Uh, that's a perfectly good antiderivative. That's not how we wrote it here. We wrote it as the natural log of cosecant x minus cotangent x plus a constant. How did the negative sign get in the middle? And what's going on there? If we were to investigate that a little bit more, uh, this is coming from the fact that a uh, coefficient out in front of a natural log is an exponent on the inside. So negative natural log is the same thing as taking the reciprocal on the inside. So you get this cosecant x plus cotangent x. This is all under one 
plus your constant. So you can rewrite it in a manner similar to this. And so then how does how do we get how do we get to the other thing on the top? Well, this is comes from using some Pythagorean identities. We're going to do a similar trick to what we did a moment ago. We're going to multiply the bottom by cosecant x minus cotangent x. And we have to do that to the top as well. Cosecant x minus cotangent x. Uh, it's similar to what we started off with, but for different reasons. In this situation, we're trying to utilize the Pythagorean identity for cosecant and cotangent. You get the natural log of the absolute value. On the top, you're going to get a cosecant x minus a cotangent x. That looks familiar. On the bottom, if you multiply that out, you're going to get a cosecant times cosecant. So you get a cosecant squared. Um, you're going to get a cosecant times a cotangent. That's negative. You're going to, that's when you multiply these ones together. You're going to get a cotangent times a cosecant, which is positive. Those cancel out. And then you end up with a negative cotangent squared plus our constant. And now this is where the Pythagorean identity comes into play. It is true that one plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. So therefore, if you take the difference, this is equal to one. And this is where the simplification comes from. If we simplify this, this would end up with the natural log of the absolute value of cosecant x minus cotangent x plus a constant. And so that's why we generally just take this to be the antiderivative. It's true, there's some steps and the simplification involves some trigonometric identities. Um, this one might be worth just memorizing or recording it in a place where you can find easy access to it. Um, and so you'll, in the homework, you'll see some antiderivatives that involve cosecant and cotangent. You'll handle them basically the same way that you handle secant and tangent, but you'll need some slightly different identities as we've seen in this video right here. And like I said, this brings us to the end of lecture 11. Thanks for watching everyone. Um, like usual, if you have any questions about any of these lectures, feel free to reach out to me. You can email me directly um, or you can just post comments here on uh, the YouTube page and I'll reply to them directly right here. If you like these videos, please click the like button, subscribe to see future videos in the future. Um, if you want to see the, the script for these videos, read the description. There's a link to a, a written description of some lecture notes uh, for which these videos are based upon. And I will see you next time, everyone. Keep on calculating. Bye.